Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Richard Wilbur, who lived from 1921 to 2017. He was an American poet. I've read a number of poems um, by Richard Wilbur on this podcast over the last, I don't know, nine months or 10 months or whatever it's been. But when I read across this poem today, I, uh, I knew I wanted to, to read it to you. Again, I, I don't want to overdo the Richard Wilbur, but I'm also not sure if it's possible to overdo the Richard Wilbur. This poem is called My Father Paints the Summer. This is how it goes. A smoky rain riddles the ocean plains, rings on the beach's stone, stomps in the swales, batters the panes of the shore hotel, and the hoped-for summer chills and fails. The summer people sigh. Is this July? They talk by the lobby fire, but no one hears for the thrum of the rain. In the dim and sounding halls, din at the ears, dark at the eyes well on the head, and the ping-pong balls scatter their hollow knocks like crazy clocks. But up in his room, by artificial light, my father paints the summer, and his brush tricks into sight the prosperous sleep, the girdling stir and clear, steep hush of a summer never seen, a granted green. Summer, luxuriant Sahara, the orchard spray gales in the Eden trees, the night again can cast away his burning mail, Rome is at Anzio. But the rain for the ping-pong's optative bop will never stop. Caught summer is always an imagined time. Time gave it, yes, but time out of any mind. There must be prime in the heart to beget that season, to reach past rain and find, riding the palest days, its perfect blaze. So I suspect that for many of you listening, especially those of you who live in the South or the Southwest, you would give nearly anything for one of those chilly, rainy July evenings, right? Here in North Carolina, the humidity is a little bit sweltering for about 22 and a half hours every day. So maybe in some ways I'm reading this poem because I'm hoping for something like that to, to, to come across soon and give us a little bit of relief from the humidity and the heat. But that's not, you know, there's more to this poem than, than just longing for that. Um, one of the things about Wilbur, especially earlier Wilbur, is the way his poetry has a lot of vigor. There's a lot of energy to it. It reminds me of Hopkins in some ways, the way he's playing with, with lines. And they're almost like, like jazz riffs or something like that. Like there's an experimentation going on here. And if you look at this poem, uh, the way he plays with lines is, is really intriguing. It's really interesting. I, I highly recommend you take a look at it. And yet behind all that playfulness, all that experimentation, all that jazz is, um, a really thoughtful poem. And I don't mean to say that, that, that those things obscure um, thoughtfulness um, inherently. I just mean to say that sometimes they ask us to to slow down a little bit, to kind of dive into the narrative a little bit, and to you know, not every everything isn't always on the surface, as is true of all great poems, I suppose. But I love the image of um, on a rainy day, everyone gathered in a in a hotel, thinking about all what they'd hoped for in the summertime. They're kind of squirreled away, playing ping pong, talking, thinking about how they wish they were at the pool or at the beach or something like that. But up in his room, by some artificial light, the poet's father paints the summer and his brush tricks into sight the prosperous sleep, the girding stir and clear steep hush of a summer never seen, a granted green. There's one of those um, experimental kind of riffs of a summer never seen, a granted green. I love that image because it's like the poet, um, you know, the painter upstairs is like the poet conjuring, conjuring and creating. There's a couple other little... uh, little lines that I'm fascinated by. So in the beginning of the final stanza, it says, caught summer is always an imagined time. Time gave it, yes, but time out of any mind. Both of those are complete sentences. Caught summer is always an imagined time. Time gave it, yes, but time out of mind. Time out of any mind, relating to imagination. It's an interesting concept that you can do some, some uh, mental leaps around, I think. There must be prime in the heart to beget that season. There must be prime in the heart to create that season, to create summer, to reach past the rain and find riding the palest days its perfect blaze. I love the hopefulness of that concept. 
There's something in the heart and the soul and the mind that allows you to reach past the rain and find riding the palest days is perfect blaze. This poem, of course, has a lot of other really interesting connections, like the idea of a smoky rain with rings on the beach's stones, battering the panes. There's just a lot of great um, uses of verbs um, uh, put into the images here. You know, so um, all right, I'll read it one more time. My father paints the summer by Richard Wilbur. A smoky rain riddles the ocean plains, rings on the beach's stones, stomps in the swales, batters the panes of the shore hotel and the hoped-for summer chills and fails. The summer people sigh. Is this July? They talk by the lobby fire, but no one hears for the thrum of the rain. In the dim and sounding halls, din at the ears, dark at the eyes, well in the head, and the ping-pong balls scatter their hollow knocks like crazy clocks. But up in his room, by artificial light, my father paints the summer, and his brush tricks into sight the prosperous sleep, the girdling stir and clear steep hush of a summer never seen, a granted green. Summer, luxuriant Sahara, the orchard spray gales in the Eden trees, the night again can cast away his burning mail. Rome is at Anzio, but the rain for the ping-pong's optative bop will never stop. Caught summer is always an imagined time. Time gave it, yes, but time out of any mind. There must be prime in the heart to beget that season, to reach past rain and find riding the palest days its perfect blaze. This has been The Daily Call. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you.